Hey everybody, I thought uh, I would make a video to show you one way to import an image from maybe an image you've taken under the microscope or something you found online that you want to use as a starting condition for your agent-based model. So what you see on the screen here on the right side is an image that Chris, who's somebody in our class, is interested in using to specify the initial locations of cells in his agent-based model. Uh, this is an image of green fluorescent protein expressing cells that he's plated onto a culture dish. And as you can see, some of these cells are kind of clustered together in groups, and then other cells are a little more fragmented and individual, kind of alone in this culture dish. And so Chris wants to use this as an initial starting configuration for his agent-based model. And so I thought I'd show you one way that you can do that. Um, if you open up your NetLogo software and then you go to File, Import, you can import just uh, a world, which could be a previously saved world from a previous agent-based model that you've made or you can import what we wanna do here, which is patch colors. You can also import um, patch colors as RGB and import a drawing. Now, if you import a drawing, that's really just a picture. It doesn't inform the patch colors of what color they should be based on that drawing. So what we wanna do here is import patch colors. So we'll do that. And we'll have to pick the file that we wanna load here and that's called gfp now what you'll see here is that what we've actually imported is kind of a coarse grained abstraction of the actual image uh, that chris wants to use as his initial starting condition for his agent-based model and that's because if we look at the details of this world size you can see that we have um, Basically, the, the X coordinate in the maximum X direction is 16, and the Y coordinate in the maximum direction is 16. So we have basically 32 by 32 world here, and the patch sizes are 13 pixels each. So that's a really um, kind of coarse grained world. So I think what we should do is edit that. And I played around with this earlier, and I found that if we use a 50 by 50, so kind of a 100 by 100 world where the maximum X coordinate is 50 and the maximum Y coordinate is 50, so it gets us 100 by 100. And if we use a patch size of five, say okay, the world got a little bit bigger, but also the individual patch sizes are gonna be smaller. Now if we do that same thing, import patch colors from that file, it looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit more like the actual image because we've essentially shrunk down the, the patch sizes to match this image and accommodated the overall world size to make it be something that looks a little bit more like the true size of this image of the culture dish. So now we have our individual patches are colored based on that image. And if we right click on any one of these patches, we can go in and inspect the patch. This happens to be patch negative two comma one. It's right here at the center. I meant to click on a green one, but clearly my pointer wasn't uh, right on top of a green one, but this is okay, it'll work. What it shows us is that there's patches of different colors. So we have a bright green patch and then some dimmer green patches. And in NetLogo, each of these um, color shades is actually assigned a numerical value and you can look it up on this lookup table here on the user manual. If you just go to colors on the user manual, you can see this schematic, which depicts all the different colors that NetLogo can use with little numbers. So we can see here, we're kind of interested in the greens. So the numbers 60 up to say 65 are gonna be the colors of the world that we are interested in. Um, in, in using here with our GFP signal coming from that green color. So um, what we can do is kind of threshold out our image based on a cutoff value. So we might say, for example, let me click on a different patch. We might say that, 
right here, this guy, patch 17 comma 13. Oh, it's still, oh, I know why it's not. It's not allowing me to pick a patch because I still have the gray highlighted border because I'm still in editing mode for that world. So let me click over here on the white space to get rid of that gray border. Now, if I go click on a patch, it should actually give me the patch I intended to click. Yes, here we go. Negative five comma four, that's this patch in the middle. You can see its neighbors have varying shades of gray, but this guy, negative five comma four is 64.9. So he's a keeper. We just definitely want to set our cutoff below that, but maybe one of these dimmer patches, like say this guy right here, let's see what color he is. Yeah, he's 60. So I think that's kind of getting in an area where we would probably want to exclude a patch that's 60. So why don't we just play around with the cutoffs here and we'll just go down to the command center. And I'm gonna change this uh, checkbox here to patches because I'm gonna be writing some code for the patches specifically. And I'm gonna say, um, if P color is greater than, let's say, 60.7, then we're going to set P color red. So basically, we'll just change all of the green pixels that are above that threshold of 60.7 to red, just so that we can see them. Now, you'll notice, if this works, some of the dimmer green patches that are below that threshold of 60.7 are gonna drop out. They just, they won't light up with red. They'll still be there, but they won't show up in red. Let's see if it works. Yeah, there we go. So now most of our patches that we wanted to keep should be here. We've obviously changed them from green to red. Let's compare that to the original image that Chris took side by side. You can say, eh, maybe it's, you know, we've lost a few cells we didn't mean to lose, but for the most part, we've retained the bigger clusters. So I think this cluster here maps to this guy over here. See there's kind of a triangle of clusters. There's one down here and one over here, one down here, one over here, some cells in the middle. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So now let's say, let's inspect. Let's just look at this patch here in the middle, negative four comma four. We zoom in on him right here. Yep, patch color is um, 15, which if we go over here, we can see 15 is the number that represents red, this cherry red here in the middle. So all of our patches now, instead of being shades of green, they're all uniformly red. And then what that can allow us to do is say, okay, if P color equals red down here in the command center, then I'm gonna say sprout is a net logo term for having a turtle emerge out of a patch or sprout from a patch. Let's say sprout one. And then let's say um, set color. Oh, let's make them yellow turtles. So, we'll, so we can really see them against that red backdrop. Okay, so with this command line down here at the bottom, we're asking all patches, if your color is red, then sprout a turtle, just one turtle per patch, and set that colors, the color of that turtle to yellow. So here we go. And lo and behold, on all of our patches that were red, we now have individual turtles. They're all randomly oriented in terms of what direction they're facing, but we have one per patch, which I think is kind of what Chris wanted. Let's go back and look at his original image, compare head to head. And yeah, you can kind of see, um, we might have thresholded out a, a few too many of the turtles, but for the most part, they're, um, you know, at least kind of in the location and where we see clusters of turtles together uh, in the GFP positive cells, in the actual experimental image, we also see our agents clustering together in those same locations. So it's a pretty good start. Now Chris could further optimize this by changing, again, changing the patch sizes, changing the world sizes, um, maybe setting the threshold to a different cutoff level so that we retain more of those dim green, dim green pixels and, and we're able to put turtles on those. 
So you have to play around with it a little bit. For the most part, uh, this, this protocol should work in terms of specifying an initial uh, agent-based model based off of an actual image that you've taken using a microscope, for example. All right, so if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to email me, but hopefully this will give you a good idea of how to um, specify initial conditions for your agents based on actual real-world uh, data.